So we're going to solve a problem on this 1969 Camaro with a rear spring, leaf spring replacement. What happened on this car is I noticed that the steering wheel was off center. And going down the road, not only was it starting to show off center, but it was also doing a strange wiggle whenever you would accelerate. And also upon a, a quick application of the brake, you felt like you had to make a quick recovery in the steering certainly something was loose. So the first thing I did is I raised it up, uh, got underneath and I checked all my bolts in the front suspension. This does have a rack and pinion on it. Uh, and uh, of course, everything underneath there at one point in the past has been pulled out, bushings replaced, things like this. So uh, my first concern was loose nuts and bolts up front. Everything was tight. So then I moved back to the back. I found the problem. We actually have two problems in this. I'm going to take you underneath and show you, and then we're going to talk about how we're going to fix it. So here's our solution. I picked up a set of Summit brand 2-inch drop springs. These are the uh, SUM7081 GM-2. It turns out these fit a whole bunch of cars, not just old Camaros. So this is a nice multi-leaf spring. It comes from Summit with the rear bushing hole empty. So if you're going to install these, you want to make sure that you have uh, a bushing kit. I went straight to OER through Summit as well and ordered a complete rebuild kit. This comes with the shackles, the bushings that make up the rear. It comes with new U-bolts. Not quite sure I can use these yet. I have a Ford 9-inch in that car, and I think those will go around. They may not. We'll find out. Um, and it comes with a new bushing pad. So... Just as a comparison, these old ones, uh, the old one just, it's just mushroomed and come completely apart. And everything on it is just rotten and hard. Uh, so it did, it did come with new uh, bushings. What's also nice about, nice about this kit is the little clips that go up under the belly of the vehicle for the front mount of the spring. It comes with new ones of those. It comes with new bolts for the front bushing, which go right here, and it comes with um, new bolts that go on the front mount plate for the leaf spring. So this is pretty handy to have everything in one spot. It was about a hundred bucks. It's a, it's a pretty good deal. The last thing we're going to do here is mount a set of these Lakewood traction bars. So quite honestly, to me, these are just fun. They remind me of when I was a kid. When I used to have that car, I had a set of chrome ones on it, and uh, the, the old chrome ones I had actually had a bracket on the back that went across and made like a faux sway bar, and uh, I just loved those. I just loved it as a kid. So um, chrome is out now. Everything on the car, you know, is black, aluminum, gray, whatever for the most part. So I went with these heavy-duty bars. They do serve a purpose. They don't just look cool, but in the event that you get a little bit of stability issues within the leaf spring under heavy acceleration, hard launching, you can get a condition called wheel hop where the spring will actually kind of twist and allow the wheel to go up and down. And this bar right here, when it's mounted, sits underneath and it will actually come up and snub up against the spring during a hard acceleration like that and prevent a wheel hop situation or at least reduce it. So like I said, I'm really not worried about that. I think these are gonna be fine with the horsepower I have and the tires I have. But these will look cool and they'll provide an extra little bit of traction assistance. So with all that, we're gonna get into it. Okay, here we are underneath the car and this car currently rides on a set of composite fiberglass springs that were purchased from a company called Vet breaks some products. Unfortunately, they're no longer in business. I installed these springs on this car uh, back when I put it together around 2004, 2005, and they worked really, really well, except for two problems. One was the bushings in them, the regular bushings that go in each end. Those did dry up and fail a little while back. And because Vet Brakes is actually out of business, I wasn't able to purchase direct replacement bushings for those. I went to Energy Susp Suspensions and was able to get, believe it or not, bushings that fit a Dodge Durango. Those squared up. That was as close as I could come and press those in in order to make it work and solve that problem. But 
This new problem, if you look, your leaf spring has a uh, sort of a center pin in it. In this case, they use a bolt. This goes all the way through. There's a hole in the bottom of the axle support here. And you have these rubber pads that go on both sides of the spring. You've got one on the bottom, you've got one on the top. So if you take a look here, the center of the axle is about right here. And looking across, this should be a little bit further. That means this whole axle right now is essentially, um, the whole axle has slid forward on the mount. And uh, that's what's causing the steering wheel to be off center whenever you're driving and you're going down straight, you're actually correcting it with the front of the car because the back is turned. This would be called a thrust angle. The thrust angle on the back of the car is, is clearly off. So, further inspection. This pile right here that looks like charcoal from charcoal grill is actually the remnants of the old rubber bushing that went in. This stuff just completely dried up and rotted and turned into hardcore plastic. I mean, it really is like an old piece of coal down here. It's unbelievable what, what happened. And this is what fell out, just loosening and dropping the bracket off. Okay, so moving along, here's the other issue. There's supposed to be a pin, right? A pin that comes down out of the spring and it lines up and locks into that bushing and then the bracket goes in and everything sits in here. Well, guess what? It's sheared off. In fact, it broke off and it stuck in the plate right there. And that would cause a lot of problems, obviously. So this axle's been able to dance around. And when I first came underneath here to check it, these bolts, excuse me, the nuts on the U-bolts were loose. And that's because this bushing has been breaking down and all that rubber and plastic has been falling out. All right, so the plan here, leave the gas tank in place. I'm taking the bolt out, the top one from the other direction, because this bottom shackle bolt goes towards the tank. Spared you all the details of unscrewing that step by step, and here we go. I've got the jack, I've got the, the differential on jacks, and that is the spring lowered down. Let's see if we can get this. Yeah, there it is. So I'm able to get the bushings and the bolt out, at least on the driver's side, without dropping the tank. So that's hand dandy. Again, these bushings I replaced not all that long ago. Um, so they're in good shape. Looking forward, this is pretty interesting. Let me take you along with me. So I just lowered down, this is the pin this is the alignment pin and it is it has wiggled loose that's interesting and then look here this is part of the rubber it has just turned it's just turned to charcoal it's unreal and then up here we have the upper pad I pull that down and there you go there's the index hole in the differential in the housing right here and we'll get that cleaned up and get the new one in it so i'll head down there and take that bolt loose and then this spring will be out we'll take a look at it on the counter so your front spring mount has this bracket plate in here and the bracket plate sits up in your frame rail where you can't get the bolt out on this side unless you drop the whole plate and This is the benefit of the kit from OER coming with new bolts. So we're going to go ahead and replace these. While I'm at it. That's it right there. And now, I've already taken the, the nut off the other side of this. But now, that's it. I've got the fiberglass spring completely released and you see these little nut clips right here I'm going to go ahead and pull those out I've got brand new ones that come with the kit so let's go ahead and move on to the other side I'll spare you all the time and trouble watching that and then we'll compare what these springs look like and start the reassembly 
All right, I'm going to catch this on video as I release this other spring. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. This is just like this. It's like coal. It's absolutely amazing. And here's the other end of that broken pin. It's just wedged in here, and it's not good. So uh, go ahead and get this spring out, but I wanted to share that with you as it came down. This is the upper pad that goes in there, and it's pretty well worn. So of course we're gonna get a new one. I'm gonna go ahead and take the bolts out of that front mount and drop it, and then we'll be out from underneath it for now. So riddle of the day, when is a Camaro more like a John Deere tractor? It's when you have John Deere Blitz black paint on your springs. So these things do come shipped just kind of like you see them. There's no packaging or anything and uh, they get beat up. Uh, there's uh, raw metal showing in several locations. So I've taken a few moments to clean these up. I've taped over the stenciling on here that has the part number just to keep that clear. And I'm gonna go ahead and dust a little paint on this. We'll wait till this is thoroughly dry, jump back in and start the install. So through the magic of you sitting at home watching this or on your phone, we just went from getting ready to paint these to painting them to they're dry. And now I pull off that tape and expose those stampings. And they look pretty good. That John Deere Blitz Black is really, um, uh, it's, a, it's a type of satin black. It's not a full on raw flat. And I learned a little trick with it. The more back to back layers you put it on in terms of being wet, you can actually generate a little bit of gloss, which is kind of interesting, but uh, got all the raw metal for now covered. It's probably gonna get scuffed up again when I put it in the car. I'll go back and touch it up here and there. So quick comparison here between these steel springs and the fiberglass ones. I'm not gonna lie, I love these. I'm gonna miss these. These springs, I mean, look at this. Lightweight, they're sleek, they don't rust, and uh, they don't require a traction bar the way that they're made. The axle won't wrap up and give you wheel hop. These things have served me well for a lot of years, but whatever's gone wrong here is just serious bad. The pin is bent out of place. These pads that were part of the original design here have just all rotted away. So, and what's happened is as it's been able to wiggle, as it's been able to wiggle, it came up and has been making contact with the mounting plate. So all of this is just a disaster waiting to happen. We're so lucky we caught it at this point where that sheared off. These springs, substantially heavier, substantially heavier. I am very happy that I got the new hardware from the OER kit. It allows me just to leave all the other stuff there, not even worry about cleaning it up. And I've got my fresh parts right here. So I've got the front caps in here with the new hardware. Everything's ready to go. What I'm gonna do is reverse the procedure. Remember this car is unique. It's been customized with that other fuel tank. That is definitely creating an extremely limited amount of space for me to work in the back. But with uh, ratchet wrenches, I'll be able to get it done and get them in. So we'll catch you back at the car. So this is pretty nice. These new clips in the kit. I don't think there's anything wrong with my old ones. But for the purposes of pressing everything up and reducing any chance of things wiggling around down here, We've got these, there you go. They pop in, lock in place, and then the new bolts will go in here to hold all that in with the bracket. All right, not gonna lie, this part right here is definitely no fun, especially if you're doing it by yourself. So uh, the way these leaf springs work, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a juggernaut you're dealing with. The um, spring is best installed 
in the rear first. It's a bit of a uh, some kind of geometry problem in the way that it's shaped and arched in terms of what has to fit under the car when it's unsprung. So um, starting out by putting a rear in and just going to put a couple loose threads on that and then I'll set up in the front section and we'll pick up with you there. Okay, the trick with the spring, once the rear is in, you've got to put a little pressure in the middle so that you bring it up. On the bracket, two of the slots, two of the holes are slotted. One of them is not. So I lined up the hole using my Phillips screwdriver. And now, as I've brought everything up, it's compressed the spring. And it looks like I have alignment now with the front slots, which I do. I'm gonna go ahead and run these bolts in. And get this one in. So right now, nothing is tight anywhere on it. Everything's just kind of free floating. I can let the pressure off the jack now and get this to swing down. There's no danger at all of the axle falling out from under the car at this point because it is now sitting completely nested under the um, spring or above the spring. So uh, let me go ahead and start getting some things tightened up. Okay, so now we've got a jack under the front of the differential so I can pivot it a little bit, make an adjustment. I'm making sure that the pin that goes through is centered with the pad on the other side. This is the new pad for this side. Press that in place. And that looks about right. And then when you go to put the if you had just a regular bottom plate, or in this case, the traction bar, unfortunately, you'll notice right away that it won't go up because the bolts aren't lined up. So the top trick for that is really big water pump pliers. Give it a little bit of a twist so that you can close that gap. All right. See if that got it. Yep, that's perfect. So now, just get these bolts kind of finger started. It's an awkward position to be in. There we go. Now, I'm going to come back and put some washers on this. I'm surprised that the OER kit didn't come with any any sort of a lock washer for the bottom of these U-bolts. But I'm first going to start out by getting everything strapped in place. Find my... here we go. These are 11 sixteenths size nuts. There we go. Alright. This right here is a little bit of a bugger. I'll work on him. But I've got to gently kind of convince everything to come into alignment here and uh, tighten that up. Now, the traction bar has its own set of instructions in prepping for the amount of play in the front. Since it's a street car, we're not going to have it snubbed up tight all the time. Uh, so I will work on that in a little bit. Obviously, got to connect my shocks. A few more things to go. I'll come back with you in just a moment. On this car, I've got an aftermarket sway bar assembly. This was also a Vet Breaks and Products component 
that I installed, you know, whatever, 15 years ago. And the plastic and stuff on this is just completely, look at that, just gone away. So I ran down to my local Napa and I picked up a couple of these Made in USA bushing uh, pieces. This would actually fit like a um, front sway bar link on a 1980 uh, Camaro, fits a lot of different parts. Pick that up, about 15 bucks. I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed in here. This is gonna do nothing but rattle and be an issue. So you have to jack up the axle, take the pressure off of it, let me get in here and get this replaced. So gonna jump on that next and uh, get ready to wrap this thing up. So thanks to the magic of television, suddenly this bushing is replaced. And all you had to do was sit at home and watch. So I'm gonna start that just kind of snugged up a little bit. Gonna go ahead and get the wheel back on it. Gonna lower it down and gonna jounce it. Gonna bounce the car. Make sure that everything can settle before I thoroughly tighten the leaf spring bushings. I also have to run the adjustment up on the traction bar. Do that right after it's been bounced around a little bit. Tighten everything down. And then we'll be taking this for a ride pretty soon. So last little bit here, making sure everything's torqued. Lowered the car, the height looks pretty decent. So just making sure everything is cinched down. And uh, then we'll get ready to take it out for a ride. It's pouring rain outside right now. So maybe wait just a little bit, we'll see. But everything looks good and tight so far. And uh, one thing I'm not happy with, the traction bars, they hang down really low. That I knew they would do, but they, um, they're supposed to ride level with the body of the car, I believe, with the ground. And they really point down at the front. And I cannot, I can't turn them up any more than they are. So um, Lakewood says that they have some kind of shim kit. And I may need to look into the shim kit to get all that straightened out. But that won't stop us from giving the car a test drive. And it's my understanding, kind of the worst case scenario for it right now, is that will make it um, having that point down too much or have it where it's riding right now, it may create a stiff ride. So I'll tell you with those old fiberglass springs, this thing had a terribly stiff ride. So who knows, it might even be better even at that point. But getting her all cinched down, looking good so far. We'll catch you on the test drive. So far, kind of took it on a little bit of a shakedown run, and overall, 
it's pretty quiet and stable. Uh, the old springs used to make a lot of racket back there, and now I know why. And I guess it was just progressively getting louder over time to the point that I wasn't really aware of what was going on. So um, it feels pretty good. The steering wheel is actually uh, off center a little bit, uh, but the alignment was done way back when with the other spring set up, and it is possible something's different, what have you. So as soon as I put some new tires on it, I'm going to go ahead and also do an alignment. But overall, it feels pretty good, and it is actually a little bit quieter. Those old fiberglass springs were making some sort of a, uh, frequency growling sound that would come through the spring into the car and I have noticed that it's a lot quieter I'm on a pretty rough road right now but when um, when I was riding before it would just howl and grind like you could hear the differential and that's quiet now so all in all pretty good I've got to reach out to Lakewood and see what to do about the uh, traction bars they're hanging down at an inappropriate angle. I'm also unable to adjust them so that they give the clearance on the spring according to the instructions for street use. And uh, I'll talk to them about that, but that's not a big deal. Those come down with four nuts and the shock, lower shock bolt. So I'm not too worried about that. In the meantime, we're gonna get this back, put it up. It's been raining pretty hard and got it covered in mud, filth, that sort of thing. So, heading back to the shop, we'll catch you later.